An emergency summit on the deadly Ebola outbreak is being held in West Africa. Health ministers from 11 countries and international experts are attending the two-day summit in Ghana. They hope to work out a regional approach to tackle the virus. The outbreak, considered the deadliest Ebola outbreak on record, started in March. The World Health Organization says nearly 760 cases have been reported, including more than 400 deaths in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Now more, let's get more on what can be done about this emerging health crisis. We're joined now by David Quammen. He's a science and travel writer who wrote the book Spillover, Animal Infections, and the Next Human Pandemic. Uh, David, why is this happening in this day and age? Is this the new black plague? It's not the new black plague, not Ebola virus, but it's very important because it belongs to a category of diseases, a category of viruses, one of which could be the new black plague. Uh, there's a group of viruses that live in animals and spill over into humans, and some of them cause not only terrible disease, uh, terrible suffering the way Ebola virus does, but also uh, are highly transmissible and can leap from one person to another and could travel around the world. Probably not Ebola this time, but the next one could be even more serious. So this outbreak is happening largely, or most of the infections and deaths have been in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Why this region, and is there a big concern it can spread beyond Africa's borders into the United States? Why this region is because the animal host in which Ebola virus lives is some sort of an African species. We don't know what it is. It might be a bat. Bats are suspected. And it's native to um, the Central African and West African forests. So, so the virus is spilled over from that animal, that secret hiding place, and gotten into people, and then has been spreading from person to person in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, now more than 750 cases, as you said. The reason it's spreading is because people are afraid of the healthcare providers, they're afraid of being put into hospitals, so they're treating their loved ones who are sick at home with traditional medical practices, and those sorts of treatments, those practices, are allowing the virus to spread from one person to another. There's no cure for Ebola, but is there a way that it can be treated? And is vaccination, is that something people are talking about? There is no cure for it, as you say, and there are no drugs that are really effective against it. The way it's treated with good health care uh, facilities is, first of all, isolating the patients, secondly, giving them supportive care, giving them fluids, giving them some antivirals. But essentially, you have to support their bodily, um, bodily vigor, their metabolism, and then wait and hope for their body to clear the virus, to cure them themselves. Uh, there is no vaccine for Ebola at this point, although there is research being done toward an Ebola vaccine. So there's no cure, there's no vaccination. Is there a way to contain it? There is, and it can actually be fairly efficiently, fairly readily contained. If you have what are called barrier nursing practices. If you have enough healthcare equipment and the right practices so that the healthcare providers are wearing latex gloves, they're wearing masks, they're wearing full um, uh, robes, they are um, not, uh, um, people are not cleaning up bodily fluids, they're not cleaning up blood, they're not cleaning up diarrhea without protecting their hands. If you isolate um, people and do not allow it to be passed skin to skin, then the, break, the outbreak stops because this is not a disease as far as we know, not a virus as far as we know, that's capable of passing through the air. It doesn't pass on a sneeze, it doesn't pass um, on a cough, it passes through direct contact with fluids and therefore it can be stopped. All right, thank you so much. A fascinating discussion, David Quammen. Appreciate your perspective, sir.